Well, good evening, everyone. This is Crossroads Presbyterian Church on YouTube, the new normal. I know we won't reach all the church family, and um, we're working on ways, of course, of keeping everyone connected and as as much as possible we want to help, and we can want to keep people safe, want to care for them. Please, you're pretty much a part of that. Bring around, particularly contact someone who who isn't connected via the internet or email, or, and just ask them how they're going. To say hello. Remember that we uh, we want to help. We want to keep people safe. We want to prepare for them as much as possible. Um, Big Swan is coordinating that practical help, and there are plenty of people are putting their hand up to do that. So, picking up groceries or whatever it might be. Also, there are new challenges, of course, in trying to work out how we do keep uh, fellowship, how we keep connected, how do we keep encouraging each other in Christ. So tonight, I'm just asking you to think about a couple of passages, but also what's happened in history, because this isn't new. Christianity has uh, had to work through many times and many situations where there's been plagues and where there's been epidemics and pandemics. In fact, in Rome in the third century, uh, the plague had hit hard. Um, Non-Christian pagan people were just bringing their dead out to, to die in the street and then fleeing the city. It was the Christians that stayed behind and it was noticed and understood by, by many that these Christians didn't seem to fear death. They would bury the dead, they would serve the sick and they would look after people until they too caught the plague and died. Because you see, what they understood was to live is Christ and to die is gain. And you fast forward that to the 1700s and the Puritan ministers Plague was alive in London, but they too took care of the sick and the dying, often to their own, often meaning their own death. Then fast forward a little bit more to 1854, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, and London again in the grip of a terrible disease, a major outbreak of cholera. And many people were dying. He cancelled everything and concentrated, prioritised local ministry. He adjusted meetings. He made it so that they could still connect. He still kept preaching. They still kept meeting. Social distancing wasn't a big thing in those days. Um, but the curious thing is that in the midst of that, anxious people, fearful people, but they were being drawn to the gospel. And on one occasion, one of Spurgeon's great enemies actually called for him in the midst of his death. Spurgeon arrived, but it was too late, and all he could do was really comfort his widow. But people could see that there was a difference in the people that love God. Now, I'm in a prayer group, and um, we're connected via uh, our mobile phones, and we share praise points and prayer points. And one of the members shared this. It's from a Dr. Julian, who is 38 years old. He's serving in a hospital in Lombardy in Italy. Now, that's a country where they've lost 5,500 people to the COVID-19 virus. Uh, some days they've lost up to 600 people, 650 people in one day. I'll read what he said. Never in my darkest nightmares did I imagine that I would see and experience what, was, what has been going on in Italy in our hospital the past three weeks. The nightmare flows and the river gets bigger and bigger. At first, a few patients came, then dozens and even hundreds. Now, we are no longer doctors, but sorters. We decide who should live and who should be sent home to die, though all these patients have paid Italian health taxes throughout their lives. Until two weeks ago, my colleagues and I were atheists. It was normal because, well, we're doctors. We learned that science excludes the presence of God, and I laughed at my parents who went to church. Nine days ago, a 75-year-old pastor was admitted into hospital. He was a kind man, he had serious breathing difficulties. He had a Bible with him, and we were impressed how he would read his Bible, 
and also read it to those who are dying. He would hold their hand. He would be with them to their end. We doctors were all tired. We were discouraged. We were psychologically and physically finished. But when we had time, we listened to him. We have reached our limits. We can do no more. People are dying every day and we are exhausted. We have two colleagues who have died and others that have been infected. We realised that we needed to start asking God for help. We do this when we have a few free moments. When we talk to each other, we can't believe that though we were once fierce atheists, we are now daily in search of peace. We are asking the Lord to help us continue so that we can take care of the sick. Yesterday, the 75-year-old pastor died, despite having had over 120 deaths here in three weeks, we were destroyed. We had managed, despite his condition and our difficulties, to bring, he had managed, despite his condition and our difficulties, to bring us a peace that we no longer had hoped to find. The pastor went on to the Lord and soon we knew that we would follow if matters continue like this. I haven't been home for six days. I don't know when I ate last. I realise my worthlessness on this earth. I want to use my last breath to help others. I am happy to have returned to God while I'm surrounded by the suffering and death of my fellow men. Please pray for Italy. Friends, the scriptures are clear that as we trust in the Lord Jesus, the death has no sting. And that's the fantastic thing, isn't it? 1 Corinthians 15. O death, swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. And thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's always encouraging for us too, isn't it, as Christians, to know that the Lord Jesus prays for us, intercedes for us, and to know that nothing, not even death, will separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Let me finish by reading Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God. And indeed, he intercedes for us. And who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or disease or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Now in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. How are we going to respond to this latest pandemic? We certainly can't copy history and we don't know what God is doing and will do. But we certainly know that people start to think and start to ask us for a reason for the hope that we have. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. What drives our other person centeredness? On Sunday, our last Sunday together, we sang, Christ is risen from the dead. And it just reiterates that tremendous point. O oh death, where is your sting? O oh hell, where is your victory? O oh church, come stand in the light. The glory of God has defeated the night. They're great words. Pray with me and let's keep ministering to one another. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness and grace. Thank you for what you do 
and continue to do with great uh, care and blessing. We pray that you would use us, your people, to minister to others, to minister to the household of faith, but to certainly reach out to others in this time of great need. Bless and be with us, we pray. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the Lord Jesus and that death has no sting and hell has no victory. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night.